Hi everybody, it's Tim with Tim Boyer Photography. This week's tutorial is exposure compensation for bird photography, adding and subtracting light, and when you make these adjustments for exposure compensation. So let's get started. If you have a dark bird in a light background, you're going to need to add light. Your camera meter is going to want to make everything 18% gray, and so the bird's going to be too dark. So by overexposing or going plus exposure compensation, adding light, you're going to lighten up the bird. You might blow out the background, but nobody cares about the background. You want the bird to be really well exposed. And so dark bird, light background, add light. Now if you've got a white bird and a dark background, you're going to need to subtract light with exposure compensation. And what happens here is that the white bird will just be blown out too much because your camera is trying to make that dark background 18% gray. So you need to subtract light so that the background stays dark and you don't blow out the white highlights in the bird. Underexpose or minus exposure compensation if you have a white bird and a dark background. Now there's two times of the day where you don't really have to worry about this too much and that's the golden hour in the morning when you have low angle light or the light is really soft and sometimes that can be a high overcast day when there's no real shadows. In those conditions you can probably get away with zero exposure compensation. This is a picture of a ring billed gull early in the morning, a little bit of golden light, the lights really even, no exposure compensation was added dark bird and a light background. Here's a rock pigeon or a rock dove and I had to go plus two on exposure compensation because otherwise the bird was very dark. It was almost like a silhouette. Now the background, it was a gray cloudy day. We're looking out towards the ocean. The bird's on a piling. So you're just getting gray clouds and, and sea. But by adding two stops, we really bring out the color in the bird. You can see some of the iridescent in the neck and, and that's what we were looking for. Here's a rough-legged hawk and I had to go plus two and two-thirds exposure compensation. Same situation as before. Cloudy winter day, a little bit dark outside. Had to add a bunch of light so the bird would show out and you could really see the detail in the bird's feathers. You can't get much darker than a raven out on the beach and so this is plus three in exposure compensation. This bird was um, goofing around on this branch. I think it might have been a little bit windy. He's trying to catch his balance and so he's flapping his wings a lot. But dialing in plus three got the right exposure for this. You can look at the histogram here and you can see that the light background is not quite blown out. There's a little space in there but the uh, bird is well exposed here. So here's a picture of a short-eared owl, another gray day, but we had to go plus two and one-third stops. The owl is not quite as dark as the raven. It's not as dark as a bald eagle, and so you don't have to add quite as much exposure compensation. So the light value of the subject will also make a difference on how much exposure compensation you need to add. Then here we have an eagle, and these are tricky because of black and white birds like bald eagles. You don't want to overexpose the whites and blow out the highlights, but you want to expose underneath the wings or the black part of the bird, the dark brown part of the bird, so that you get a nice exposure. So one and one-third stops was enough exposure compensation on this bird. And you can see here that there's some room here for the highlights and the whites, and then there's some room back here for the darks. And so that's kind of a nice even exposure for that bird in those conditions, and the head's not blown out. And then dark gray day, wanted to do this kind of uh, music note silhouette of these birds on telephone wires. One and one third exposure compensation really lightened up the gray background. And then also the birds stayed pretty dark. If you have a white bird and a dark background, you've got to subtract light. Right, because what's going to happen is the bird's going to be overexposed. The highlights are going to be blown out. So you need to underexpose or you need to dial in some minus exposure compensation. Hey, if you get a chance, uh, give me a like or a share for this tutorial. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you've already subscribed, thank you very much for watching these tutorials. I really appreciate that. So here we have a snowy egret, you can tell because it has the yellow feet. And the exposure compensation was dialed in at minus one. And you can see that the bird looks a little bit hot still. The, some of the white areas are still a little bit blown out, although the histogram is showing that it looks okay. With a white bird and a not a super black background, but a pretty dark background, minus one, 
exposure compensation. It keeps the background dark. It doesn't make it 18% gray. And then it doesn't make the bird too white. The camera's not adjusting too much that way. In this picture of a great egret, you can see that it had minus one because the background is just a little bit darker. That dark green and some of the shadows there, a little bit darker. Minus one ended up balancing the light enough so that we didn't blow out the highlights. Early morning light, brown pelican, exposure compensation dialed in at minus one third. This bird is not super bright white, but it's light enough in the gray tones and in the, the face and the, and the bill that a little bit of exposure compensation dialed in made it so that the background stayed dark and the bird stayed light. And so sometimes you don't have to dial in a whole bunch of exposure compensation, but you can dial in a little bit. Then if you look at the histogram over here, it shows that I have plenty of room to the right here, but I don't want to blow out the highlights, especially here on the neck. They already look like they're pretty bright. So I, I don't want to minus exposure compensation because I don't want to blow out those highlights. A Western Gull landing in La Jolla, exposure compensation dialed in at minus one third because the bird is white, the background is kind of light blue, not a lot of exposure compensation was needed. Hey, thanks for watching the tutorial today. Remember, if you want to learn more about bird photography, I have three ways for you to do that. You can get a copy of my book, Learn the Art of Bird Photography. It's for beginning and intermediate photographers and birders who want to take better pictures. You can get that on Amazon as a Kindle book and as a paperback. You can also learn more about bird photography by watching my YouTube tutorials. There's about 60 of them up there now, and I cover a lot of different subjects. If you want me to cover something specifically, just ask. Somebody asked me to do this one on exposure compensation. Leave it in the comments below if you've got some a topic you want me to cover. I do bird photography workshops uh, throughout the Western United States. This is where you can really learn a lot very quickly. As an example, in December, we go to Bosque del Apache, and we will be concentrating on birds and flight photography, and people will get really good at birds and flight photography after four and a half days at Bosque del Apache in December. Just one example of how you can learn more about bird photography really quickly. Hey, thanks a lot for watching. I will see you next week. Bye.